Well, in the world of college athletics, it's very rare for a coach to stay in one place 10 years, much less more than 30 years. But Ken Sparks is a rare coach, one of the all-time winningest in college football, and one that has made a career of doing things not his way, but God's way. The autumn leaves on the campus of Carson Newman University mark an important time of year in East Tennessee. Football season. Ken Sparks has roamed the sidelines here for 35 years. He recently passed Bear Bryant to become the sixth winningest head coach in college football history. It's a historic achievement, especially considering how he got started. Got a bad case of mononucleosis. I ended up dropping out of school and uh, was asked to coach a 12 and 13 year old midget league football team. So here I was about 18 or 19 coaching 12 and 13 year olds and that was my uh, kind of introduction to, to the coaching profession. And he soon realized it was much more than just a job. I knew in my heart the Lord had called me to coach and so I actually walked down the aisle of a church and told a the pastor that God was calling me to coach, and I was making it public that I was going to do that. After coaching at the high school level for a few years, he accepted the Carson Newman post in 1979. I don't care what you do in life. Uh, if you do it as unto the Lord, you won't have excellence. You won't do it the very best you can. And so, you know, as a coach, uh, uh, me wanting to honor the Lord uh, as a coach, man, I, I wanted to do it the very best I could. I wanted to win all the ball games I could win as long as I was doing it in a way that honored him. And success came quickly. In just his fourth season, Sparks led the Eagles to their first of five NAIA national championships. When we started winning national championships and a lot of offers started coming, it was all wrapped up pretty good, you know, more money, more prestige. But he knew in his heart that Carson Newman was where he was supposed to be. God called me here, and God never did give me permission to leave. Number four on the roster, number one in the heart. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. You can't get any higher than being where the Lord wants you to be. Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed from within by the renewing of your mind. So what? So you can know God's good and perfect will for your life. It don't get any better than that. Sparks' impact at Carson Newman extends far beyond the football field. Can I pray for you? He sees his role as an opportunity to change lives. We gotta have some men stand up and be difference makers or we're gonna get washed down the drain. You know, we got, we got a lot of males running around, but we don't have many men that, wanna, that really wanna make a difference for Christ. Football does so much teaching in itself, teamwork and others instill of yourself and giving of yourself, which is you know, what uh, living for Christ is all about is giving up self for the sake of something greater. Mike Clowney was an All-American player under Sparks and is now his defensive coordinator. One of the biggest things for us was that whole spiritual development and growing together. You know, when you're here and you're a part of something, you feel like everyone is moving in the same direction. It just kind of makes it a lot easier to kind of unite as a team. Dino Waits recalls his recruiting visit. The first thing Coach Sparks did was uh, met with me, uh, met my parents, and first thing he did was pray with us. And when he did that, I kind of explained to my grandmother about my visit here, and I told her that, they, that he prayed with me, and that was pretty much a sealed deal because my grandmother had a big impact in my life, and so she was like, hey, if a coach will take the time to pray for you, that means that he's more interested in eternal things rather than just football. Waits found success on the field, but his playing career would be cut short by injury. I tore ligaments in my wrist and had to uh, get a medical red shirt. And uh, I was kind of torn with that. You know, that's my last senior season. And so uh, I was kind of upset and like, man, this is going to be, it's not what I expected. And uh, Coach Sparks came to me and put a whistle around me. It was like, hey, you're my, you've been my captain for so long. And he was like, I want you to coach. And, He's like, this is the most important thing to me. This is what you really mean to me, so I want you to impact these players and coach them up. That opportunity led to a career in coaching. Waits now works on the defense along with Clowney. They're just a couple of the players who have been impacted by Sparks. I think the biggest legacy he's passed on to me as a coach is that people in life and Christ are way more important than football. 
you know, as a young player and as a young coach, I felt like the game was the only thing that there was. And I think as you continue to grow and prosper, the things you wind up learning to respect and want to accept a lot more is, you know, we're trying to develop these guys, you know, for eternity and not just for tomorrow. Sparks leadership is recognized throughout the coaching profession. Former NFL coach Tony Dungy recently honored him as the first recipient of the Uncommon Award, recognizing uncommon leadership through character and faith. He called me and wanted me to come to Minneapolis to be presented, and there was 5,000-something men, uh, and, and there was close to 300 professions of faith. And so, <laughs> you know, so... So that's the kind of trophy, that's bigger than that trophy. Even that's a 72-pound trophy, that's bigger than that trophy, so. <laughs> Sparks plans to continue coaching as long as he feels called, but does so battling his toughest opponent yet, cancer. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer a few years back and fights it with weekly treatments and his most powerful weapon, his faith. There's a lot, a lot of people's got cancer and uh, and so, you know, it's opened up another avenue to try to be an encourager. It's the same message. It don't matter whether it's coaching football or battling cancer. Praise you and thank you, Christ's name. Thank the you challenge is the same. Right. That is whether you're going to do it God's way or whether you're going to do it your way. You know, I mean, that's bottom line, you know. And, and I do have an advantage at my age. I found out that my, age, my way don't work and his way does. And so that makes it pretty simple. As the final seconds tick off, win number 325 is in the books. But for Sparks, it's never been about the numbers. If you concentrate too much on winning ball games, you'll miss out on some life. <laughs> and so, you know, let's, let's win life and then ball games will fall underneath there someplace where it belongs. Wisdom from a man fulfilling his calling. The only scoreboard that really matters is not the one at the end of the field that shows who wins a ball game, but it's the scoreboard in your heart that determines whether you win the eternal life or not. We want to make sure that we play to the right scoreboard, and the right scoreboard is our relationship with Christ. What an inspiration, you know. People on the outside will just look at the number of wins he has as a football coach, but I love that he doesn't even care about that. To him, it's more important the impact that he's made, and he's made a big one. Yeah, impressive. I mean, we talked about spiritual leadership earlier, definitely a spiritual leader for that team.